Het verheugt mij bijzonder dat dankzij de welwillende medewerking. Today it is a year ago that the Japanese, without previous declaration of war, launched their treacherous attack on our allies. At that time we did not hesitate for a moment to throw ourselves into the struggle and to hasten to the aid of our allies whose cause is ours. Japan had been preparing for this war and for the conquest of the Netherlands Indies for years and in so doing sought to follow the conduct of its Axis partners in attacking one country after another. This plan we were able to prevent thanks to our immediate declaration of war. After a year of war, we can bear witness that the tide is turning and that the attacker, who had such great advantages, is being forced on the defensive. It is true that the Netherlands Indies, after defending themselves so heroically, are for the most part occupied by the enemy. But this phase of the struggle is only a prelude. The Japanese are getting ever nearer the limit of their possibilities as our ever-growing might advance towards them from all sides. They have not been able to break China's courage and endurance, and Japan now faces the ebbing of her power in this self-willed war, which will end with her complete downfall. At this moment, my thoughts are more than ever with my country and my compatriots in the Netherlands and the Netherlands Indies. After an age-old historical solidarity in which had long since passed the era of colonial relationship, we stood on the eve of a collaboration on a basis of equality when suddenly we were both confronted by the present ordeal. The treacherous aggression on the Netherlands in 1940 was the first interruption in the process of development, the heroic battle of the Netherlands Indies, followed by the occupation of the major part of this territory in 1942, was the second. At the time when the Indies were still free and only Holland was occupied, the vigor of our unity became apparent, and on both sides a feeling of stronger kinship developed more rapidly than it could have in peacetime. Now, however, this mutual understanding has been deepened still further because the same struggle is shared in all its agony and the same distress is suffered in all its bitterness. In the Netherlands, as well as in the Netherlands Indies, the enemy, with his propaganda for the so-called New Order, has left nothing untried to lure the spirit of the people and to disguise his tyranny and suppression with the lies of his promises for the future. But these lies and this deceit have been of no avail because nearly all have seen through them and have understood that our enemies have as their aim nothing but slavery and exploitation and that as long as they have not been driven out and defeated there can be no question of freedom. In previous addresses, I announced that it is my intention after the liberation to create the occasion for a joint consultation about the structure of the kingdom and its parts in order to adapt it to the changed circumstances. The conferences of the entire kingdom, which will be convoked for this purpose, has been further outlined in a government declaration of January 27, 1942. The preparation of this conference, in which prominent representatives of the three overseas parts of the kingdom will be united with those of the Netherlands at a round table, had already begun in the Netherlands Indies, Suriname, and Curaçao, the parts of the kingdom which then still enjoyed their freedom. Especially in the Netherlands Indies, detailed material had been collected for this purpose, and it was transmitted to me in December 1941 by the Governor General. The Battle of the Netherlands Indies disrupted these promising preparations. We can only resume these preparations when everyone will be able to speak his mind freely. Although it is beyond doubt that a political reconstruction of the kingdom as a whole and of the Netherlands and the overseas territories as its parts is a natural evolution it would be neither right nor possible to define its precise form at this moment. 
I realize that much which is great and good is growing in the Netherlands despite the pressure of the occupation. I know that this is the case in the Indies where our unity is fortified by common suffering. These developing ideas can only be shaped in free consultation in which both parts of the kingdom will want to take cognizance of each other's opinions. Moreover, the population of the Netherlands and of the Netherlands Indies has confirmed, through its suffering and its resistance, its right to participate in the decision regarding the form of our responsibility as a nation towards the world and of the various groups of the population towards themselves and one another. By working out these matters now, that right would be neglected and the insight which my people have obtained through bitter experience would be disregarded. I am convinced, and history as well as reports from the occupied territories confirm me in this, that after the war it will be possible to reconstruct the kingdom on the solid foundation of complete partnership, which will mean the consummation of all that has been developed in the past. I know that no political unity nor national cohesion can continue to exist, which are not supported by the voluntary acceptance and the faith of the great majority of the citizenry. I know that the Netherlands more than ever feel their responsibility for the vigorous growth of the overseas territories and that the Indonesians recognize in the ever-increasing collaboration the best guarantee for the recovery of their peace and happiness. The war years have proved that both peoples possess the will and the ability for harmonious and voluntary cooperation. A political unity which rests on this foundation moves far towards a realization of the purpose for which the United Nations are fighting, as it has been embodied, for instance, in the Atlantic Charter, and with which we could instantly agree, because it contains our own conception of freedom and justice for which we have sacrificed blood and possessions in the course of our history. I visualize, without anticipating the recommendations of the future conference, that they will be directed towards a commonwealth in which the Netherlands, Indonesia, Suriname and Curaçao will participate with complete self-reliance and freedom of conduct for each part regarding its internal affairs, but with the readiness to render mutual assistance. It is my opinion that such a combination of independence and collaboration can give the kingdom and its parts the strength to carry fully their responsibility, both internally and externally. This would leave no room for discrimination according to race or nationality. Only the ability of the individual citizens and the needs of the various groups of the population will determine the policy of the government. In the Indies, as in the Netherlands, there now rules an oppressor who, imitating his detestable associates and repudiating principles which he himself has recognized in the past, interns peaceful citizens and deprives women and children of their livelihood, he has uprooted and dislocated that beautiful and tranquil country. His new order brings nothing but misery and want. Nevertheless, we can aver that he has not succeeded in subjugating us, and as the ever-growing force of the United Nations advances upon him from every direction, we know that he will not succeed in the future. The Netherlands Indies and the Netherlands, with their fighting men on land, at sea, and in the air, with their alert and brave merchantmen, and by their dogged and never-failing resistance in the hard struggle, will see their self-sacrifice and intrepidity crowned after the common victory with the recovery of peace and happiness for their country and their people in a new world. In that regained freedom, they will be able to build a new and better future.
Join the conversation and stay connected. If you have suggestions for other historical speeches or works you'd like to see recreated, please leave a comment below with your recommendations. Your input is invaluable in shaping our content. Also, don't forget to subscribe to our channel for more unique and thought-provoking content. Thank you for watching and being part of our community. And I would like to take a moment to thank all of my patrons and YouTube members who help fund this work. Gold, Ben, DJ, Aaron, Edward, Space Captain, Myron, Harrison, Musicata, Carlisle, Ali, Cece, J.D. Bradley, Rolfus, and Kid Vanderboos.